Okay, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises go unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kadash. Double honors to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations go unto the hopefully elect tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So, back again with this article here. And as you can see, the title Biblical Swarms of Giant Mormon Crickets Destroying Crops in U.S. West. Alright, so here it is, yet another another plague from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, to plague this wicked land of America, Babylon the Great, man. Alright, and uh, you know, the most high have been pouring out a lot of judgments recently. <clears throat> Cause hey, this is the year of the most high turning up. Okay, so hey, the most high turning up on the judgments, he turning up on the death, the famine, the plagues, everything is turning up right now. Okay, so getting into the article, it says farmers in the American West are battling outbreaks of Mormon crickets, insects that can grow almost three inches, eight centimeters in length. You can see it there, how big he is. You know what I'm saying? He, these, these ain't no little small, you know what I'm saying? It's like half the size of her hand, all right? So reading on, it says, in the past few years, the crickets, in addition to grasshoppers, have destroyed swaths of crops as officials spend millions trying to control the swarms according to the associated press the climate crisis may be partly to blame and it ain't no damn climate crisis man this is all of yahweh bashim yahweh shai okay because the same plagues that the most high sent upon ancient egypt he's sending the same plagues today on modern day egypt all right babylon the great man so this is exactly what we're seeing the insects prefer both hotter temperatures and droughts, conditions that are linked to global heating. These outbreaks can be extraordinary as the species often travels in groups of millions or billions. <laughs> you see that? It says millions. Hey, man, they travel in the millions and billions, okay, of individual insects, okay? One rancher told AP that the swarm have been truly biblical, and that's the spirit. You know, that's the spirit on them to say that this is a biblical plague. Why is that? Because these are the same plagues that Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai are sending upon this land, just as he did in Egypt. So real quick, let's jump to Exodus 10 <clears throat> and get that account. Okay, so this is Exodus, the 10th chapter, and we're going to start here, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his officials so that i may perform these signs of mine among them that you may tell your children and grandchildren how i dealt harshly with the egyptians and how i performed my signs among them and that you may know that i am the lord so moses and aaron went to pharaoh and said to him this is what the lord the god of the hebrews says how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me let my people go okay just the same as moses and aaron went to pharaoh and said let my people go let the children of israel go hey the prophets is doing the same thing today man okay sign and crying against his wicked kingdom man all right and you know you got the prophets you know the uh the men of the lord all right we we petitioning to yahweh bashim yahweh shah every single day to get us up out of here man okay every single day so okay so these are the same supplications the same prayers that we sending up to the lord man okay let let us go <clears throat> so that let my people go so that they may worship me if you refuse to let them go i will bring locusts into your country tomorrow they will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen they will devour what little you have left after the hail including every tree that is growing in your fields okay and it just said in this article here that these um mormon crickets as they are called they travel in groups of millions and billions okay now i've seen locusts before like i've seen a swarm of locusts before but i ain't never seen them like in the billions like that's crazy i can't imagine seeing billions of locusts like it's like they would if it's like that they would probably, you know, literally blot out the sun, man. Like, they would block out the sun. How many locusts that would be. Okay, but that's exactly what the Lord sent upon Egypt. All right. Said, they will devour what little you have left after the hell, including every tree that is growing in your fields. They will fill your house and those of all your officials and all the Egyptians. Something neither your parents nor your ancestors have seen from the day they settled in this land till now. 
Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Says Pharaoh's officials said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go, so that they may worship their Lord, the Lord their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined and uh, the plague of locusts? This this wasn't the first plague that the Lord sent. Okay, uh, the Lord has sent other plagues previous. He has sent hail. <coughs> you know, the Lord has sent hail. You know, he had caused a uh, a uh, famine. Okay, that's why I said that, that the locusts shall come and consume what little food that you have left. Okay. So the Lord was already smiting the land with various plagues. So then the locusts, you know, they just came to clean up pretty much. Okay, that's why, you know, Pharaoh's, um, you know, council, his his officials said to him, do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? Just just go ahead and just let them go, man. It's up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, their, their God is destroying our land on account of them. So just let them go. Can't you see that, that we're being judged? You know what I'm saying? That's basically what they were saying to him. So it says, then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go worship the Lord your God, he said, but tell me who will be going. <clears throat> Moses answered, we will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters and with our flocks and herds, because we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh said, the Lord be with you if I let you go along with your women and children. Clearly you are bent on evil. No, have only the men go and worship the Lord, since that's what you have been asking for. Okay, so pretty much Pharaoh repented that he should let them go. You know what I'm saying? The Lord hardened his heart. <clears throat> so like he just drank some water. But, you know, Pharaoh uh, repented of letting the children of Israel go. Okay, because the Lord had hardened his, his heart. But the Lord did that to show his power, okay? The Lord did that to show his power in the land of Egypt, okay? To make himself known to the children of Israel and the nations round about, man. Okay, because when the Lord judged Egypt, when the Lord played Egypt, all the nations knew what the God of the Hebrews had done unto the Egyptians, okay? Hence, as, as it is written, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. So once the Lord executed those great plagues, those great signs and wonders upon the land of Egypt, all the heathen nations round about knew the power and they feared the God of Israel. Okay, that's why a lot of times a lot of these nations ain't even want to come up against Israel. And that's why Esau knows that in order to keep us down, in order to continue to oppress us, that he has to take us away from our power by way of what? making us go off not keeping the commandments okay esau understands that because once we come back in order under the law statutes and commandments of the most high then nothing can stop us esau can't touch us no more and that's it for him okay so esau has to keep us in a perpetual state of wickedness in order for his kingdom to continue to thrive okay that's why he you know bucks up so hard against the bible okay that's why he doesn't teach us who we really are according to the scriptures man because he can't have us come back to our power. <clears throat> All right, but let's get to the point. Uh, verse 12, and the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over Egypt so that, so that locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hell. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor would there ever be again. <laughs> you see that? So, just as they saying here, this is a plague of truly biblical proportions, man. <laughs> okay, and it says in Exodus 10 that this, you know, that that uh, this plague of locusts that the Lord sent, that this was never seen before and was never seen again in that land okay it says they covered all the ground until it was black they devoured all that was left after the hail everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees nothing green remained on tree or plant in all the land of egypt <laughs> hey so look at that right hey the lord is terrible you know what i'm saying because the lord literally set the locusts and they cleaned up everything it, it, it it, it even say that nothing green remained on tree or plant, man. So it was no food left. 
If you was dying of starvation in Egypt at that time, you you couldn't even go to a tree and pluck off a leaf and eat that because the locusts cleaned up everything, man. You see? So, hey, the Lord is terrible, man. You see? The Lord, <laughs> when the Lord hands out that judgment, hey, man, it ain't nothing to play with. So they left nothing green. Nothing was left by the time the locusts was done with the police, man. You see that? And that's the spirit that the Most High had on them locusts. Okay, let's get the second Ezra 15 and let's get uh <clears throat> what do I want? Second Ezra 15 and verse 10. Okay, behold my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, okay, dealing with the redemption of the children of Israel from their captivity, okay, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, now when he says as before, what is he talking about, as before as he did in ancient Egypt, the same plagues that he brought to ancient Egypt, they're going to come again upon this land of Babylon the Great and wherever else that our people were scattered into captivity the same plays are going to come upon those places okay and will destroy all the land thereof with the with the plagues egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that yahweh shall bring upon it <clears throat> okay so going back here to the article okay truly biblical mormon crickets technically a species of flightless Katie did and not official crickets got their name after a ravaged crop crops planted by Mormon settlers in 19th century Utah. As they march across the country, the insects devour vegetation, damaging crops and even changing patterns of erosion, water runoff and nutrient cycling, says USDA. Last year, 10 million acres in Oregon, which has been especially hard hit by the species, were destroyed by Mormon crickets or and grasshoppers. So you see that, man. These these uh, you know, uh, crickets, grasshoppers, locusts, they devour 10 million acres in in Oregon. Okay, 10 million acres, man. That's a lot of area that 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 they destroyed. Okay. <coughs> So, hey, man, the Lord is sending the plagues upon this land, okay? Since Mormon cricket outbreaks, outbreaks can follow drought conditions, according to the Oregon State Government, as warm weather and a lack of rainfall help the insects hatch and survive. And once again, the Most High is creating the perfect conditions for this judgment to come forth, okay? The Most High is the one that caused it to rain. The Most High is the one that caused drought, okay? The Most High controls everything, man. So if these, uh, you know, insects is, is uh, coming forth like that, then that's all of the Most High. That's all of the will of the Heavenly Father, okay, to bring forth judgment. All right, <clears throat> so let's get this. All right, because these are also spirits created for, for vengeance, man. Okay, vengeance against the enemies of the Most High. So this is Ecclesiastes chapter 39, going to start at 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them, which is who? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai created the spirits for vengeance, man. Okay, they lay on the, the sore strokes. Okay, that can be by way of famine. Okay, that can be by way of afflicting people mentally, physically, all right, destroying food, famine, the crops. All of that, man. All of that is is from the Lord. Then it goes on to say, verse 29, fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Okay. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. You see that? So when the Most High sends these judgment forth, forth by way of these beasts, okay, by by way of, you know, uh, storms, you know, famine, you know, people rising up against each other with a sword, killing each other, hey, man, those are spirits sent by the Most High, 
And when the time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So if the Most High tell that spirit to go do something, they're, they're going to do it. They're not going to ask the Most High why. They're not going to, uh, you know, second guess. They're going to go out and, and do what, you know, the Heavenly Father want them to do. All right. So that's what we're seeing here. I'm not going to read them more of this article because I think the point has been made. Um, you can see the title here. So if you want to get into it, you can read that there by uh, the Independent. All right, so now I got this other article lined up here. All right, and the title is Putin is threatening poor country with starvation as the next stage in his ruthless Ukraine war. Experts warn. All right, so now Putin is threatening poor country with starvation, and once again, that's all through the spirit. Okay, that's all through the spirit that the topic of you know food shortages and supply chain issues and you know, starvation and famine, okay, that's, that's not a coincidence that these things are being talked about, man, okay, this is, this is a, uh, this, this is an omen, okay, that the Most High is setting up within the earth to let you know that these things are coming, okay, the starvation is coming, famine is coming, okay, massive death and hunger is coming to the planet earth, <clears throat> all right, and, and he's going to use, he is going to use these world leaders, he is going to use Esau, Edom, the wicked to bring these things about man okay so the article says russia's war in ukraine is fueling a global food crisis which experts say is a deliberate tactic ukraine is one of europe's biggest wheat producers but the war has made exporting extremely difficult okay experts say putin is willing to starve poor countries to create a crisis that paves the way for russia's victory in ukraine all right and then yo these world leaders, they have spirits on them, okay? They Putin got spirits on him, okay? Biden got spirits on, on them. China, North Korea, they all got spirits on them, man. Okay, the Most High is the one that moves the chess pieces on the board. All right, the Most High set these leaders up to do his bidding, to do his will upon the earth to forward prophecy, you see? So that's why, you know this this whole russia ukraine conflict popped off and that's why world war three eventually is going to pop off as well because the most high wants this to go down all right and all he's doing right now is he's setting up the pieces okay he he he's uh you know putting the instructions in these world leaders okay in these certain talking heads man to forward prophecy <clears throat> okay that's all it is all right so uh says russia's invasion of ukraine is exacerbating a global food crisis and experts say this is part of a deliberate effort by the kremlin to stoke famine and pressure the western coalition that's supporting ukraine's government an effort the eu has decreed has decried as a war crime russia has a hunger plan vladimir putin is preparing to starve much of the developing world as the next stage in his war in europe all right so you see that he says Russia has a hunger plan, which we've been telling you about this for years, okay, that hunger is coming, okay, massive death by way of famine and hunger is coming, man, okay, and it, it you know, really is already starting, okay, you got all these farmers out here telling you, you know, coming out saying, hey, uh, in the next six months, you know, 2023 is going to be a very, very hard year when it comes to food, okay, because, you know, food, food is already high. You know what I'm saying? Food is already high. You like you can still go to the store and get food, but it's just higher than usual. And it's, and it's going to continue to go up. All right. But pretty soon they saying, yo, it's not going to be, you know, food is going to be very scarce. And because of the scarcity of the food, the price is going to jump even higher. OK, because people are going to be demanding food, obviously. <coughs> but there's not going to be enough of it to go around. So not only is it going to be the scarcity of the food, but the price of it, because it's going to be so much limited of a quantity, is going to go astronomical. <clears throat> okay, and no doubt that's going to lead to hyperinflation, which once you get to the point of hyperinflation, you, you can kiss an, uh, in, in, in economy goodbye. You can pretty much kiss a country goodbye once you get to that, unless you replace it with a new system. But we already know what that's about, so I'm not really going to get into that. All right good into that nwo but um where was i at okay it says timothy snyder a yale historian and an expert on on authoritarianism tweeted on saturday 
adding that Moscow is planning to starve Asians and Africans in order to win its war in Europe. This is a new level of colonialism Snyder added. Okay. Ukraine widely described as Europe's breadbasket is a major exporter of wheat, sunflower oil, and corn. It provides roughly 10% of the globe's wheat exports, 15% of corn, and close to half of the world's sunflower oil. But the war in Ukraine, particularly Russia's blockade of Black Sea ports, has thrown a wrench in its export business. This is leading to a shortage in food supply and skyrocketing prices in many countries that could plunge tens of millions more people into starvation. Experts are warning. <clears throat> okay, so y'all get the point, man. Okay. As we've been telling you, as we continue to tell you, okay, famine is looming. Okay, hunger is coming, man. And there's no stopping it. Okay, and these and these leaders here, they're they're gonna push that because when you're at war, you know, a a, a classic war tactic is that you have to starve out your enemy. Okay, you have to starve out your opponent, man. And that's exactly what the Most High is going to put on these world leaders to do. <clears throat> All right. So this is uh, let me get. Okay. So this is Ezekiel 33 verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Okay. So when the things that the prophet spoke will come to pass. All right, when these certain events, when these famines, when these wars, when these pestilences come, then you're going to know that a prophet had been among you. Okay, because right now people doubt and they scoff and they scorn. They say, well, you know, the Bible isn't real. You guys are crazy. Okay, just like the days of Noah, just like people told Noah that he was crazy because they was, you know, Noah was talking about a flood. You know what I'm saying? Noah was talking about water going to fall from the sky and it's going to rain for oh so many days and it's going to destroy the earth. Nobody on the earth at the time of Noah had ever witnessed rain fall from the sky, so therefore they they didn't believe it. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> you know, just like now, we telling people famine is coming, war is coming. You know, what I'm saying Pe people never experienced a famine, anyway, or at least in America. You know, what I'm saying in, in, in other parts of the world, they're used to famine. Like famine is is a reality. Okay, but here in America, mainly in the Western world. People don't believe in famine. People don't believe that, uh, you know, world war is is, is uh, coming. You know what I'm saying? These, these people believe that their comfortable little lives are going to continue, that things are going to go back to normal at some point. But no, it's not. <clears throat> you know? And people, and, you know, growing, you know, in, increasing more and more, the average citizen is starting to realize that, no, things are not going to go back to normal. Okay, things are only gonna getting worse. Okay, and, and you know, people start to realize that it's gonna be you, you know massive breakouts. You know what I'm saying? Massive uh, rebellion taking place. You know what I'm saying? Uprisings of the people, man. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get a uh, let's go ahead and get Ezekiel five and twelve. All right, because hey. These these wicked Babylonians, man, they, they don't have no idea <laughs> what's about to come. All right, it's about to be a time like it's never been seen before and will never be seen again upon the planet Earth. Okay. So this is Ezekiel 5. Let's start at verse 11. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, Therefore will I also diminish thee. Neither shall mine I spare, neither will I have any pity. A third part of thee shall shall die with the pestilence and with famine, shall they consume in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. <coughs> okay, so you see, man, judgment starts. At the house of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, so these things are going to befall the Israelites first. Okay, the uh, the two thirds of our people. Okay, then this is also going to hit the nations as well, man. Okay, because the Lord is going to pour out His cup of indignation upon all the nations. Okay, but this is first going to start with the house of Israel. 
with the two-thirds of our people, those that want to be wicked, those that don't want to take heed unto the men of the Lord, those that don't want to return unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, they're going to be afflicted with these things first, man. Okay? Pestilence, famine. Okay? And, hey, hey, right now, if you're paying attention, there's been a lot of judgments going out, man. Okay? Just over this, this weekend, this holiday weekend, you know, July 4th, there, there was a shooting. And, um... You know, over there near near Chicago. It wasn't in Chicago, but it was a sub suburb of Chicago. I forget, <coughs> I forget how many people died. I think it was like eleven people died in like sixteen or more. I, I'm not sure the exact number, but some people died out there, man. So that's more judgment from the Most High. You know, uh, the other day a train derailed, a train derailed, and like forty something people died. You know, a, a tornado just, just, just happened out there in uh, uh, the Midwest. <laughs> I'm saying 20-something people. To, so, hey, man, it's all kind of judgment going out, man. All right, the Most High is, is definitely, you know, cleaning up the wicked. All right, and, you know, as we get further into prophecy, it's going to get worse and worse, okay? The, these judgments are going to get more severe. You're going to start to see more crazy weather patterns. You're going to start to see more crazy judgments, okay? The Most High about to get creative, man. Understand the most high about to get real creative with these judgments for these wicked people because they, you know, refuse to hearken unto the prophets. Okay, they refuse to hearken unto the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, <coughs> let's get uh, let's get second Ezra 16. And let's see what I want here. I think it's about verse uh. Yeah, verse verse 21, start here, it says, uh, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Okay, so all these evils, all these things are growing upon earth, man. Earth, sword, okay, which is, which is war, okay, people rising up against each other with the sword, killing each other. Famine, lack of food, food shortages, and great confusion, man. Okay, you 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 literally got people out here, you know, marching for their rights to kill unborn children. <laughs> okay, confusion. You know, what I'm saying you got, <clears throat> you know, we we uh, just concluded with a uh, Pride Month. Okay, that's that's like the ultimate confusion right there, man. Okay, you had all kind of transformers and. You know, men, you know, butch dykes and all this, you know what I'm saying? Great confusion, okay? Verse 22, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Okay, so the famine is coming, okay? It says many shall perish of famine, okay? So many, many people are going to die of hunger, man, okay? Going back to the article, it says what? It says Putin is threatening poor countries with starvation. What's that? Hunger. Okay. Lack of food, man. Lack of lack of nourishment. Okay. And the other that escaped the hunger. So even if you escape the famine, even if you somehow, if you rich and you wealthy and you got some money to buy extra stuff and you can ride out the famine, guess what? The sword is going to destroy you, man. Okay. You might get hit by a damn missile. You know what I'm saying? The most high might put a spirit on, you know, 20 hungry people to come up in your house wherever you at and just take you out. And just take your food, man. You see? <clears throat> so even if you escape one thing, even if the most high allow you to escape the hunger, man, the sword gonna get you. Okay? So this is what we gotta keep in mind in this time, man. Hey, the most high is not playing. Okay? And all these things that you see in the earth, these things are not happening for no reason. Okay, this this is this is an omen from the Most High that if you're in the spirit, you can tell where all this is going, man. According to the scriptures, all right. So I just wanted to get get those two articles, man. Uh, hopefully, it was edifying through Kadash. Call hello, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Kadash. Till next time, Shalom to the elect. DTA come Yashallah and the Bible ball Shalom.